We are back, Sam Cedar, on the Majority Report. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time of the show where I say something that you think is going in one direction. You don't understand what I'm talking about. And really what it is is a way for me to do a roundabout cue for Matt to play the Matthew Film Guy song. And unfortunately, um, you know, while we were, it, it, uh, the Matthew Film Guy song was not in our go bag when we, uh, when we left the office. And uh, so we need to track that down. So I'm just going to say, you know, do the, the last line. It's Matthew, film guy. Matthew, film, film guy. guy. Film guy. Film guy. Hey, Sam, how you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm fine. How are you doing? You are in, uh, you're in, uh, you're, you're sheltered at home in Queens? Yes, I am in my usual sheltering in place location, which is my home office. So I can't say that the quarantine is that different than my normal existence, except for the complete collapse of everything outside of here. Right. So, um, and now are you guys stepping outside to get some air? What are you doing? You, um, Matt. I've been walking my dogs, Dudley and Mabel. Uh, you know, Mary and I have two cute little fuzzy dogs, and they still need to go outside and walk around and pee on stuff and do their business. Of course. So uh, I've been managing to do that. But, you know, people are on the street being fairly respectful, giving a wide berth. Um, so I think I'm probably not putting myself at too much mortal risk doing that. But uh, these days, I don't know. And how know. are you getting but, food? Uh, it, what are you doing? For, what are you doing for food? Uh, we stocked up big time. Uh, you know, we we've been dipping into the takeout thing, a little civic duty, a little laziness with preparation. Um, I feel like you got to load up on takeout now before things really fall apart and then keep the food that can stay in the freezer and the cupboard. So we've doing a little little bit of mix of that, although I think we've transitioned more completely to preparing our own food at this point i did an instacart had one guy come and drop off some food you know kind of did the quarantine protocols on the food that way but uh it's uh you know it's been a it's been an adapting process i've had to learn the value of lotion not just washing your hands but lotion because uh, i've washed them so hard that they've started to like crack so uh you know okay. it's a learning curve I understand. Um, well, I'm sorry to hear about your, your hands. Well, in, in many respects, um, uh, uh, the, this time, this moment is, is really, is really yours to shine, at least in the context of the show. This was, um, uh, in many respects, this, this segment was developed, uh, based upon the, uh, the premise that over the weekend I'd need some streamed um, uh, videos to watch. And back at a time where we had to like, you know, where streaming was still in 2010, when we started this or 2011 or 12, whenever it was that you, we started having you on, like it was, it was a unique thing, right? Like you could stream something. And uh, now of course, this is the way that everybody gets their uh, entertainment for the most part. And, um, it, 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 you are in high demand. I mean, people aren't just looking for one movie from Matthew Film Guy. They're looking for a whole uh, mess of it. And I also, I should also, oh, well, uh, I'll get there. But uh, so, I mean, do you feel any type of pressure? Oh, definitely. I mean, this is a, this is go time for, for a film guy. Uh, what you got in the chamber, you know, everyone's got their uh, favorites. And uh, it's really, you know, you also have to walk a line. Like, do you want, to take this moment to kind of reflect and spend time on a movie that's a little more difficult that you may not have felt like you had the space in your life to really give attention to that it requires a foreign film an art film or at this point where you're underneath a stressful pandemic do you just want to veg out and watch something that could actually just take your mind off of what's going on uh, i've actually vacillated between the two extremes i've been watching some of those more difficult movies but then like when it gets really bad i've been watching like freaking Hulu reruns of Knight Rider. So like, I don't think it gets much lower than that. What? Um, so you really have to Wait, know Knight what Rider? your mood and moment is. Knight Rider? Is that with Kit? Is that <laughs> yeah. the one with the, the talking the car? The show with the talking car, Sam. That's how bad things are getting here. The show with the talking car. Wow, man. That, that show is, I mean, that show is bad. 
it's terrible and it's but it's hilarious because you get to watch some sort of like 80s kind of uh, dynamics of television production and you know i liked it when i was i was like eight when that show came out so uh it really had uh it, it gave me exactly what i needed just something completely mindless and escapist um but at the same time you know there's also the 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 sort of a trend is like give me your outbreak movies give me your disease movies so we've delved into a little bit of that mary and i uh we've gone down that sort of road although now it's getting to the point where those i don't know if we can even enjoy those in the same sort of ironic way as it's getting sort of closer and closer here in queens but yeah. uh, there's some of those uh, on tap is there, so is there any films that have captured sort of this dynamic i mean not really right but i mean this is like i, I feel like this is well this... the, the the big one is contagion by uh soderbergh that that one people have been talking about a lot and i've seen that years ago with uh gwyneth paltrow and it really shows the sort of connectivity between the way things are spread and so on. And it is it is harrowing. It is definitely not uh, a light, uh, distracting entertainment uh, for for times like this. But you know, there's other ones like we, Mary and I watched uh, Outbreak with uh, Dustin Hoffman and Cuba Gooding Jr. and Morgan Freeman. I don't know if you recall that from the mid '90s. That Vaguely. one's a little more mindless. It's Wolfgang Peterson, and it basically ends with a helicopter action chase. So. It's not quite as, as deadly, but it has some quotable moments. Did we like survive? Like Hoffman says, it's airborne. So you can enjoy that with some distance. Uh, actually, uh, if you want to get right to one of the ones that I'm seriously recommending here, um, I think the uh, 1950 film starring Richard Widmark, it's sort of a crime gangster movie on the back of a doctor trying to stop a pandemic called Panic in the Streets. Have you ever heard of that one? No. That one's actually enjoyable because it's got enough sort of disease touchstones where you see Richard Widmark as like the very um, sort of um, intelligent, competent public health official doing what we would hope somebody would be doing right now, trying to track down the killers of this person who they discover has plague, basically. So they need to find that it's a twist on a sort of film noir kind of crime gangster movie where they have to find the killer, not just to capture him, but because he's possibly spreading this disease. And uh, it's, you know, it's got a great cast of bad guys. Jack Palance as zero Mostel as a bad guy. Really? Um, and it's not too heavy, but it still has that feeling of like, oh, this has happened before. People are aware of this kind of thing. So it gives you the kind of feeling of like, OK, this isn't brand new uh, for the world. And uh, meanwhile, it's, you know, a gangster movie. So you can kind of veg out a little bit. Uh, I like that one. That sounds interesting to me. Now I have to say, I, I have even less time than I normally have had. Right. Yeah. I you got to fix your internet. I understand. I'm, I'm doing the show. I'm trying to set it up. And then I've got the kids now, you know, uh, for the part of the day that I'm not working. And then obviously into the night. Um, so I don't, you know, I'm not promising anything. That's all I'm saying. But I mean, other no, I people. And I, this is more for the audience. I understand that you take these recommendations, you kind of file them away, and then you just ignore them. But yeah, the fine. only thing so I have time camp, to. We want you on that wall. We need you doing what you're doing. Don't waste any of your time relaxing. Okay, we need you. The only time I uh, I, I carve out any time is uh, for, you know, to watch uh, Survivor, and I'm I'm weeks behind. Yeah, I mean, if you if you didn't watch that, how would you make a metaphor about almost anything on the show? That's right. I mean, it is stunning how many. Yeah, how, you how, need that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm and, and so in a way, I'm working even when I watch that show. That's right. That's right. It's definitely part of the business. Uh, uh, what What else you got? Because one is not going to do it for a lot of people. They're at home. No, I I got a bunch. Okay. Uh, you know, I also watched. Uh, you know, I don't. Have you ever seen the film Going in Style? the Carl Reiner movie from the late 70s? I don't think so. I think you would like this. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. It was directed by Marty Brest, but it's uh, George Burns, Art Carney, and Lee Strasberg playing three senior citizens who decide like rob at the end of their lives that they're bored with their retirement to go rob a bank. And I did, I, I'm, I'm quite sure I saw that. Because there, there was a period of time where like George Burns had this resurgence and like, uh, like where like the Sunshine Boys I mean, that's, uh, I, yep. I, that was I, a little I, earlier in the seventies, but yeah. Uh, yep. and the, um, there was a couple of those, like where like, you know, old, really old guys, uh, going out yeah, and doing exactly. stuff. And Art, Art Carney, you know, from the honeymooners, like yep. his, probably I think his last role. 
And, uh, you know, that's one of the ones that's like been on my list for years. I have some moments to clean it up. Turns out it was actually shot not too far from here in Astoria. So that was kind of nice to see the old neighborhood in the 70s. Uh, that's a great one. That's a, it's actually a very touching movie, even though it is sort of like, again, sort of like a, a gangster comedy. I feel like that's one I could watch comedy. with the kids. You could probably watch it with the kids. Yeah, I think so. I watched, um, <laughs> oh, I did that joke the other day and I thought it was. Last uh, I actually laughed at your last tango joke. I just you know to, other people other people thing. told I, me that they they did too. I mean that is, I mean it's not so much like it's it's not it's not uh it's not so much about the reference. It's about the nature of the film, right? Exactly, like, exactly. Right. Yeah, the I butter could, scene and so on. I could have used I, nine and a half weeks too. Would have been also like a kid. something like that. That would have been also inappropriate to watch with Saul. Yeah, um, definitely. Unless Jim Carrey was in it, but go ahead. Um, um, I also want to say, like, if you're really looking to delve into the art film side of things, as I have, uh, another filmmaker I've been inspired to delve into is this Japanese filmmaker, Hirokazu Koreeda. I may have mentioned him in the past. I feel like you uh, have. I, sh I showed his film Afterlife to my senior citizens class, which, by the way, is also now moving to a distance learning model. So I'm trying to get a bunch of senior citizens up to speed on Zoom. And uh, it sort of went well. We had like five or six people managed to do it out of like 20. Um, but we're we're hoping to ramp that up. So I feel like be able to be keep teaching that class. I feel like you, you could teach a second class on just getting on Zoom, and then yeah, yeah. You... I basically have. I'm writing like a tutorial to try to get them to do it. And like, here's the equipment you can get if you don't have this. But the good news is, it may open up the class to just more than just old retirees. So uh, we may wind up uh, having many, many more people on there. And uh, if if uh, the, the opportunity presents itself, maybe I'll forward you the information for that so anybody could sign up for this class oh that's exciting maybe you've uh you found i mean i there's going to be a lot of like new uh new businesses new ventures that, are, that come from this yeah and i mean and i'm gonna need it i mean i you know i just got an agent for editing after sundance just in time for the world to collapse so like that was like good news bad news so uh yeah there's gonna have to be some sort of uh, uh creative thinking going on here although some of my Corporate clients are still keeping me uh, employed, but uh, yeah, you don't know what's coming around the corner. So maybe it's distance learning of film classes. Who knows? I got to say you getting a, an agent as an editor coming off of Sundance and then this happening makes me feel like you took all the wrong lessons from my career. <laughs> and I have done my best to pattern myself after your career. So yeah. this is really a bad time to tell me that. Yeah. But, uh, Maybe so. Maybe so. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I do hope the world comes back online, not just for my own personal film career, but um, that's on the list of reasons. Okay. Uh, you know, T Ted Alexandro's podcast is still going. In fact, we've upped it to two times a week. So if you want to check out a little bit me with Ted, he's, you know, he's changed from being a stand up comedian to a stay at home comedian. Those guys are really devastated. They can't actually tell that's jokes true. in public anymore. So everyone's on Instagram or, you know, online, basically making social media just a little bit more funny a little bit mm. it's arguable but yeah and you know and ted does things like covers like the actual situation the pandemic he's always got that political bent so uh i think people like checking out a little bit me with him uh you know and actually i found out things just from mary mary and her friends are playing like these online games like now with zoom and everything it's like i think people are hanging out actually more at least in new york spending more time with each other now that it's like oh we can all do this and you know hang up whenever we want walk away from it whenever we want so it, it may actually wind up that people are interacting more under this quarantine than they did when they had the opportunity to actually go somewhere well i think more people have more time and you start to think yeah. about you know also start to prioritize you know what's important uh, in, in 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 your life and that is like i think connections with other people yeah and that's why i'm on season three of night rider right which is about a guy and his talking car. It also jumps. You know, it jumps over stuff. Every episode, it jumps over something. The car? Oh, yeah. Turbo Boost. I got to uh, be honest with you. I never time. watched yeah, an entire cool. episode of that. Call. I mean, I've watched a lot of junky television in my life. That is not one that, I mean, that's beyond junky. That's, oh, yeah. What's it's sub junk. Uh, it's great keep... when David Hasselhoff actually sings, too. Oh, my God. It's, it's a unbelievably great and horrible wait jamie but yeah you don't have to pay attention too close to it jamie what what did you say i was just gonna say you guys keep saying this show is bad but it sounds awesome 
It is. It's, but it's both. So it's really hard to say which is. It's like it's Schrodinger's cat. It's, it's amazingly cool and terrible at the same time. I, you know, I loved it when I was five. Like that was like the draw. And now you see it, and you're like, oh my god, this is. I think the problem. So I think the problem for me is that it came out when I was probably like twenty, right. uh, or yeah. fifteen. Yeah. And I'm like, you, yeah, you were twenty. This is you dumb. Were, was, like you right. know, Herbie the Love Bug was more interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I think Kit and Herbie the Love Bug would probably be buddies if I had to really put it to it. I just, uh, I also, I experiment. think I found Hasselhoff to be like, who cares about that dude? Yeah, and he is terrible. He is really, it's, it's really amazing to watch the cheesy '80s acting. Uh, Edward Mulhair as uh, as Devin is sort of like his handler. He's he's actually a classy actor. He, he you get some uh, uh, inspiration uh, that he could actually uh, you know cash those checks, but. Uh, Anyway, it's it's like it's like a time machine. It's like what did people think was worthy of the eighties were horrible. In the eighties were horrible, just in everything. It seems to me. Yeah, but, um, yeah pretty much. All right, do we uh, have one? It's, you know, also the quarantine has allowed me to listen to all kinds of new music too. So I, I know I'm the film guy, but Bandcamp uh, is starting to offer a greater cut of the profits to the artists in this time. So like, I bought a whole ton of music that I just been sort of hoping to see or listen to. Um, Wait, is so this your way for thing. covering that you only have three films? Oh, no, I got more. You want more films? Yeah, give me one more film. Four films. Okay, well, um, I did... First of all, everyone should be following me on Letterboxd uh, at Letterboxd with no E, uh, you know, B-O-X-D slash Langdon Boom. That's uh, Matthew the Film Guy's Letterboxd. Um, and you can see, like, all the movies that I'm watching, all the movies I've uh, recommended for this. I also watched, I watched another, oh my God, this one I've been meaning to watch for so long and now I realize why I didn't. But like, do you realize that Candid Camera made a documentary, like an R-rated documentary in 1970 called What Do You Say to a Naked Lady? No. Have you ever heard of this? No. You need to see this. It is horrifying. I mean, it is, it, it's incredible. It's disgusting. It's like, basically like, I can't, I can't describe what's worse about it, that Alan Funt is actually like some sort of, serious sexual pervert or like that he's interviewing these people in the 70s it's like it's like an anthropological look at what was actually happening in the 70s both on purpose because he's asking questions about like sex and morality but also by accident because the way he's talking about it is so like um unself-aware at least you know 40 50 years later right um but that's that's a weird one to put on your list but it's highly disturbing in its misogyny and just casual sort of sexism Oh, great. Um, yes. Well, let's definitely promote that movie on. Uh, well, but it's as a histor as a historical view of the morality and the and the mores of that time. I think it's extremely important. Um, OK, let's see. We also you know, I, I saw another movie that I, this is one that I can't say I recommend that highly. But um, well, that's what you're shape. doing here. You're recommending movies. You're not talking about movies oh, okay. that you've seen that are bad. OK, what? okay well, that here's one I can sense. recommend. Fat City, one of the last movies by John Huston, made in 1972 about a sort of washed up alcoholic boxer played by uh, Stacey Keach. And it stars Jeff Bridges uh, as his co-star and Nicholas Colasanto, who was coach on Cheers. You'd remember him from that. Uh, it's just a great 70s slice of life kind of, uh, you know, based on a novel. So it kind of has that novelistic kind of uh, structure to it. And uh, it, it's just like a really great movie with really great behavior. You know, these days, every movie is so plot oriented. You're just moving from thing to thing. Uh, but this movie really has real human behavior, a lot of squabbles and that kind of like oh, look at you. noisy you 70s style. Reaching yeah. into your inner Ray Carney. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, Ray I'm Carney, of course, is of the... Movie, uh, but it is one of those heyday of the 70s movies but it's by john houston who did like you know treasure there's the right. madre and he did Falcon some very iconic uh more like hero's journey movies and this one is more you're saying is a little bit more is a little smaller and more about relationships yeah and towards the end of his career he he did that he did that kind of thing which is kind of interesting to to see a guy like that who you know kept kept changing kept growing uh even throughout his uh you know golden years shall we say you yeah. know when he did stuff like the african queen and asphalt jungle but then he wound up doing uh you know wise blood is another one i may have mentioned that before 70s, 70s quirky 70s movies that um definitely could have been you know he was a generation older than spielberg and and de palma and scorsese and right. these guys but he was still doing this kind of stuff and we should say uh, ray carney of course is the um uh was your film professor at bu 
Uh, well, no, he wasn't actually my professor. I, I didn't go to BU. I went to Florida State. I just got in touch with him because I read his book on John Cassavetes, and it uh, just blew my mind when I was 19, and we struck up sort of a correspondence, uh, right. okay. and it went from there. That's how I met you. Yeah, short yes. story long. Uh, exactly. Uh, 20 years ago, I, Ray was uh, a fan of uh, Who's the Caboose? and I, Which I've heard that's very good, too. That is good. That is also available uh, on, like... Um, Amazon or iTunes, you know, the, 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 the fun thing for folks to do is to go and uh, watch just to give it, get a sense of like how bad at this I am. Um, Go and watch the, the trailer for who's the caboose. It doesn't involve any of who's the caboose. It involves actually uh, Dorsey um, who is uh, uh, back with us uh, at the beginning of this show, I sat in an office and before we even set up anything for the show, I did the trailer for who's the caboose. And it is, you know, I watch it now and I, at the time, you know, I, I, I would, I would get into my head a little bit and was like, I don't care how it is for marketing. I just want to create something with everything I put out. And it is the worst marketing device and, and, and if folks don't aren't familiar with the movie business, a trailer is supposed to be something that gets you to watch the movie. And I did not appreciate that element of it. And the trailer is, I, I don't, I, I, I can't imagine that anybody goes like, oh, I'm interested in seeing this movie now after this trailer. It's just got to be like, what the hell is that? And it was. I liked it. If you recall, I actually edited that for you. So uh, oh, I right. believe that uh, I was in. I was. Uh, well, why didn't you say to me, Sam? This is interesting and it's it's good if you've seen the movie and maybe you've seen Pilot Seas in the sequel but but that's not the point of this. The point is to get people to to watch right. it. And I was doing it as if like they had watched the movie and watched right. the it was sequel. for the fans. It was for the fans cuz they just wanted to know that they could buy it again. Yeah. I, I mean I made the the trailer for for only for the maybe 100 people who had ever seen the movie. So you and go they really appreciated it. I, I don't know that that's the case either. I never heard from anybody. I never heard anybody say anything about that trailer. Except well, for, I can tell you right now, I liked it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, but Who's the Caboose is available on, I think it's iTunes. And, and now it's also dated the, uh, the, the trailer because I, my character refers to it as iTunes. Uh, without I, I yeah, or something to that effect. I don't know because yeah, yeah but you did you did that on purpose, didn't you? Yes, you were, that was, was me. That was me. Silly. You know, playing up the boomer before people even knew what it was. <laughs> yeah, now it would st- strain credulity to think that even anyone, like even as dumb as you, would not know how to pronounce iTunes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, Matthew, film guy, uh, the movies that you have uh, recommended, I will uh, reiterate, are Panic in the Streets, Going in Style. Hirokazu Okaida's Afterlife, and What Do You Say to a Naked Lady, and Fat City. We will put all of those uh, in the uh, the descriptions of today's show. Uh, Matthew, um, you know, I don't know how long this is going to go on, but we're going to be leaning on you, I think, heavily. I mean, I, I don't know. We may end up doing this segment on a Wednesday. That sounds fine. I'm going to be doing my job here, consuming this media and trying to make sure that it's good enough to recommend to you and your audience, Sam. So you can call me anytime. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Matthew Film Guy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, got a couple of uh, clips. 